full eyeshadow and how to blend it like a dream. In today's video, we'll be using the brand new Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. It's also my dream because it's so beautiful. And I'm going to be breaking down step by step of how to blend your eyeshadow like a dream, even if you have mature skin or hooded eyes, and really make it just not as intimidating. What brushes to use, how to build color, all that good stuff. So step one, whenever I start doing my makeup, is I always like to fill my brows first and carve them out with concealer. I just think starting with my brows and framing my face really allows me to understand where the eye look should be blended to, how high to go, how far to go out, and I always start with my eyes in general because if we have any fallout or if you're blending past here, you can clean up with a makeup wipe opposed to doing your base and then having fallout mess up your concealer or have having to be super careful around this edge here to not go too far, and then it's harder to clean up. I like going in with a taupe pencil, and even though taupe technically is for cool tone blondes, I just really think this is the most flattering for, honestly, everybody, unless you have black hair, because it's cool tone, so it doesn't pull red, and it doesn't look too dark and harsh. And now I'm going ahead and carving my brows out with the new Morphe concealer brush. This is part of the new Vegan Collection, super affordable, awesome to carve out the brows because it gives you such a nice sharp line. And I'm using my Anastasia Magic Touch Concealer. If you want to use a little bit of an eyeshadow primer, feel free to use just your eyeshadow primer or mix a little of the eyeshadow primer in with your concealer. Blend everything out with a beauty sponge to really melt it into the eyelid and make sure we have no excess buildup. And then I'm going to set everything with a little translucent powder. Putting down a layer of translucent powder, think of it almost as a powder primer where now all the other eyeshadow powders we go on top of it with are going to blend a lot easier opposed to clinging to wet concealer. Now that the brows are filled and the eyelids are primed, we're going in with the Natasha Denona My Dream palette. So this palette is so beautiful for fall. The packaging is stunning. It just has one of the most beautiful collection of neutrals, both cool and warm, as well as those gorgeous fall colors like duochrome pinks and purples. You're even getting a beautiful cool tone brown, warm tone brown and black. So Natasha Denona palettes are definitely an investment, so you don't need to be using this one. I think Natasha Denona shadows are so beautiful that they blend better. Investing in a little bit of a higher end palette will actually make blending a whole lot easier, opposed to a cheaper palette sometimes Sometimes it can be a little patchy and you may think it's your fault when it's really the formula of the eyeshadow. So now when designing an eyeshadow look, I always like to think of your eyeshadow look as a sunset. So imagine looking at a sunset, you're going to see the lightest shade at the top fading down into the deepest, darkest, richest colors. And believe it or not, the concealer or primer we choose to start with is actually part of that sunset because on our brow, that is actually going to stay there. We're not putting any color really high up unless you're highlighting the brow bone with a shimmer. I don't really like to do that. You can use a matte as well. That's why I prime my lids with my concealer because it's about two shades lighter than my complexion. So it's giving me that natural highlight on my brow bone. Now the first shade we're going in with is a shade called the transition shade. So normally when you're looking at an eyeshadow palette, your transition shade, and the reason it's called that is because it's going to go right in the crease. So it's transitioning the top of the brow with that highlight, nothing on it, into the darker stars of the show on the eyelid. So that's why it's called a transition shade. Normally, if it's a nude or neutral, it's definitely going to be about two, three shades darker than your complexion. So for instance, in this palette, we are going to start with this shade right here called Nurture. So we're going to dip into that Nurture shade. Always tap off the excess because you're going to get that fly away and fluff. We don't want to go right in with that. And now for everybody, but especially if you have hooded eyes, you want to tip your head back, push this right into the socket of that crease. Don't hold the brush too far up. The closer you hold the brush, the harder you're going to be. So you really want to choke back on the brush. It's going to make you blend with a much lighter hand. So pushing this in the crease, go in with circular motions which will give you a more natural blend on the top and slowly bring it in about 50% back to the outside. And again, this is why I like starting with my eyes because if I feel like I have too much product on my brush, I can drag it past, which I know I need it there, but I'm not messing anything up. And now that I feel like most of the product is off my brush, I'm gonna take it in 
to the inner part of the crease, still working in circular motions. And now I really feel like I have nothing left on my brush. I feel like everything is deposited on the lid, so I can be a little crazier with my brush now because I'm not putting color anywhere. So now, I'm with circular motions, I'm gonna move up a little higher and connect this to the inside of the brow which doing this, especially with a neutral nude transition, is gonna give you a natural contour following the line of the nose. And now I can use this brush to work upwards and blend out what we deposited when we started a little higher past the crease, but not all the way up. And if you feel like the brush you're working with maybe isn't blending the way you want it to, or there's too much product on it, switch to a brush with nothing on it and use that to blend out the edge of what you deposited because you know there's no color on it, so you know all this is doing is blending opposed to depositing more unwanted color. Now, I feel like we really have that at a great spot. And look at that blend. And now this is why it's called the transition because look how it's taking that highlighted brow bone into that darker and it, now it gave a natural contour to the eye our crease looks a little bit more defined and deep and now we can go in and put darker shades or more bright shades or foil shades on the eyelid and now if you have hooded eyes something you're going to want to do with a brush like this so you can see the difference between these two brushes see how this black one is pinched just like this. It's not completely round the way this one is, where this one's really gonna blow the color out. Go in with something more pinched like this after you've done this step, dip back into that exact same shade, tap off the excess, and instead of tipping your head back, tip your head forward like this, and you're gonna see, even I have a hood to my eyes, looking into the mirror like this, you'll be able to see what part of your upper brow bone is visible when your eyes are open, and with your eyes open, deposit more of that transition so you can see it when your eyes are open and it doesn't all disappear into the crease. Stamp it on, don't worry about blending too crazy. This is why we tapped off the excess. Now that we have it there, switch to a clean fluffy brush. There really is nothing left on this one. And use this to blend that out. And now, even for hooded eyes, you know your transition shade is actually high enough where it's going to be visible even when the eyes are completely open. When it comes to blending eyeshadow, I like to work from lightest to darkest. Other artists may do it in reverse. Someone like Nikki Tutorials is somebody that always starts with her darkest shade first and then uses a lighter to blend the edges. That is definitely a more advanced technique and really requires you to be like a blending pro. Working this way, in my opinion, is much simpler and much more foolproof. So now we're gonna work on introducing darker shades into this look. So where we started with Nurture right here. Now we're going to go into Carpe Diem right here. And on a pinched smaller brush, just like this, so this one is pinched the way the other one was, and it's even smaller, we're going to dip into Carpe Diem, tap off the excess. And now when you're applying eyeshadows, it's the same as contouring the face. You want the inside of your eye here to be lighter and brighter, which will make them look more open and full. And you want this area in the outside to be darker, which is going to make it look more sunken in and recessed, and even bringing the darker up a little bit here is going to give more lift to the eye. So with this slightly darker shade, we're just going to use this to stamp on the color. So stamp this on. Think of the outside of the eyelid as a V shape. We're stamping this on in a V shape all the way into the crease where we started with the transition shade. Need a little more here. Tap off the excess. Again, this is why I love starting with the eyes because I can bring it past where I want it. And then I know it's gonna give, when I clean up, I know I brought it out far enough. Not worrying about blending yet. Same trick with hooded eyes. You wanna close a little bit more and look and make sure with your eye open, you can see this shade. And now that I have it stamped on a little barbarically, I'm gonna switch to the second brush we use, which is also the pinched one, but it's a little bigger and fluffier with nothing on it and use that to blend this shade out. Because once again, if we use the brush we put this color on with, it's gonna keep depositing color as we try to blend out this edge and it's gonna bring this darker shade way too high. In this case, we know that this clean brush is doing nothing but blending out the edges without making anything too dark. And see, I can be much more liberal, going crazy, blending this edge to get that nice gradient sunset appearance. I'm actually gonna bring this shade in a little 
further than I did. So see, I'm just gonna stamp it on the outside half of the lid, switch to my clean brush, and use this to blend the edges. All right, there we have it. So see, once again, now imagine once we clean that up, we have that nice sunset where everything is blending into each other, getting darker and darker. Now you can totally pop a nice matte light shade on the inside or a nice champagne gold or any kind of lighter shimmer here and your eye look would be done. We're gonna introduce a little bit of color into this. So now I'm going in with this gorgeous kind of maroony purple shade called Instinct. And on the same brush we just deposited Deposited and stamped on Carpe Diem. I'm gonna dip in with that brush, tap off the excess, and now we're gonna almost do the exact same thing, but instead of bringing it up into the crease where we brought Carpe Diem, this is just going real deep on the outside lash line. So the outer 25%, a little bit into the crease, but see the difference where I'm not bringing it way up there how we did with Carpe Diem. Now with a darker shade like this, because it's gonna be the most outside shade, I really like to bring it past where I know we're gonna want the eye look when I clean it up with a makeup wipe because this is gonna be the outmost shade. Think of it like your wing liner where when you clean this shade up with your makeup wipe, it's gonna be the most outside far shade. I like where that's at, switching to that second brush and same old thing, using this to blend the edge of this Instinct shade. This is also a testament to this kind of a palette by Natasha Denona, like I was saying about investing in a higher quality palette, because look how easy these shades are blending, especially mixing them and using darker shades like this. They're just blending like butter, and a more high quality palette like this is gonna do that for you. So now this is beautiful. We could leave this like this, but I wanna show you if you do ever wanna get a little bit more sassy or smoky with it, we're gonna take this and almost mimic what we did with the Carpe Diem shade. I'm gonna bring this in the crease a little bit. You do not need to do this. And what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of this and lightly, like our hooded trick, eye a little more open, kiss this color right above the crease. The reason I'm doing this is because once we put our shimmer shade on the inside of the lid, I want a little bit of this purple kissing just above that. Switch to that second brush and use this to blend out the edges. And see that? Now we have a little bit more depth and darkness right in here. So when we put our shimmer shade on, it's gonna give us more contrast and really make it pop. Like I said about the sunset, do you see how we have our nice highlighted brow bone into our first transition shade into the second Carpe Diem, into this nice, rich, dark purple. Now we're gonna go in with the shimmers on the lid. So, especially with a palette like this, you can use your fingers, and your fingers are gonna give you a lot of payoff when it comes to packing this on the lid. However, some people have bigger hands, or they have nails, and they really can't get in there. So I wanna show you how to use this with a brush, because it is gonna make your life a lot easier. And a brush like this is perfect for shimmers or mattes on the inside of the lid. This is the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe J. H51 and see how it almost looks like a little like baby cat paw brush and it has that little rounded top so when we're packing this on we can really just follow the shape of the lid without making a mess. Now we're gonna go in with this gorgeous shade called Babies. This is such a beautiful shade it almost it's very hard to describe it has a little bit of a champagne but almost a little bit of a purple like golden shift to it it's absolutely stunning so now i'm gonna dip in with this cat paw brush get it nice and coated now i've never used a natasha denona palette this is my first one i'm incredibly impressed this is exactly how i knew it was going to blend i'm dipping into this tapping off the excess and we're gonna spray with a little bit of setting spray this is gonna put the setting spray between the shadow and your skin so it's really gonna stick some formulas and Natasha Denona is something I could anticipate being one of those formulas don't always work with a brush believe it or not because they're so creamy that it kind of just packs it down when you go in with a brush and you may have to use your finger we're about to find out but we're going to take this and close the lid and really start working pressing this onto the eyelid
Oh, this shade is so beautiful. Okay, so it's definitely working. It's putting it on there. It is by no means as pigmented as I know it would be if we used our finger, but that's okay. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to use the brush to kind of get the shape we want. So when we do press with our finger, we don't have to take our finger too high because this is making our top border nice and clean. So especially with hooded eyes, do that close technique. Really raise the brows and see where you want this to be when the eye is open so you can still see everything. And now the reason I brought that Carpe Diem shade in a little bit more is because see now we're overlapping a bit, but it doesn't look quite as stark because we're not bringing this baby shade into that dark purple. It would be a really hard blend because the Carpe Diem shade, this medium darkness depth, is giving us a lot more of a soft transition between the two. Tipping my head back now, now that I have a good idea of the shape in my head and using this to deposit where we need it. This is also great using the brush because it's giving me a much better blend rather than using my finger. It would be way too bright and stark. But now that we have that on, it still looks nice, but we're going to go in with the finger because it's going to make it so much more intense. And we're going to press this right on the inside of the lid. Now look how much more of a punch that has using the finger. And I knew a formula like this would do that, but see, I didn't have to worry about like carving out my actual shape with my finger because we already did it with the brush. We have everything exactly where we want it as far as the shades in the Natasha Denona until we get to the bottom lash line, but I'm gonna amp this up a little bit more to show you what you can kind of do with it. So we're gonna go in with one of the one size eye popper liquid eyeshadows. This one is so stunning. This is in the shade everything and more so we're gonna take this with our wand It has our little doe foot and keeping the little cat paw Jacqueline brush we had on hand We are going to deposit this onto the eye almost like liner a little bit higher and very quickly switch to that brush and use this to press all of that in and blend everything out don't swipe just press because if we swipe it could drag and remove the shadow not because of the formula but because of the dragging motion you could use your finger to blend this out as well or you could even take your brush into the liquid shadow if you'd rather that and use it this way to build up any liquid shadow where you want it. Now look how this one size shadow just brought this to a different dimension. So now this is even something you could take a black and just run this on the outer lash line to give it a little bit more dimension there. And I'm really hoping that the way I'm breaking this down and applying everything to the lid is making doing any kind of color look or any kind of eyeshadow look you want to do much less intimidating. It's all about knowing what kinds of colors, darkness, the depth, the tone go where. And once you understand that, as well as your own eye shape, the world is your oyster. So now for the people interested in it, I'm actually gonna go into that black, which is called the Black is Black, and we are using the smallest pinched brush, which we deposited the purple with. And now with a black, don't be intimidated by it. Like I said, think of it as a wing liner. So we're gonna take this and really very low, pack it on the lash line of that outer half, stamp it right here. See, almost like we're putting on wing liner. Don't worry about the edges of it. Don't worry about blending it. Want it right to about there. Switch to our first fluffy brush. As we've been doing, use this to blend. So run over it. And now instead of blending in, because I don't want to bring that black in, I'm going to press on it and drag it out. This is again why I start with the eyes. I don't care how messy down here gets because we're going to clean it up with a makeup wipe. So I'm almost stamping on it and pulling down. Stamping and pulling, which is gonna give us that blend, but it's not gonna bring the black in any farther, which I don't want. Now see that? See how we have our black now? We have a little bit more depth and dimension, but it didn't muddy things up and go in too far. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take that same brush, this bigger one, not the one we dipped in with black. Once you dip into black with an eyeshadow brush, she's done, she's cooked. The only thing you're using her for is black. I'm dipping back into the Instinct Purple because I feel like it got a little, we just lost the pizzazz that it had really tapping off the excess and right past where we put the black I'm just gonna stamp a little just to make that purple a little bit richer where I feel like we lost its color in the blending process tipping just like for hooded eyes I kind of want to bring it 
in a little bit more because it got taken away there. Beautiful, that's all we need. Stamp, stamp, stamp. Switch to our very first blending brush that has never touched shadow other than the first transition shade and use her to blend. There you have it, guys. Look how nice and gradient and blended everything is. This is looking stunning. This palette, 10 out of 10 for me beyond worth it if you want a beautiful palette for fall and winter. Now I'm gonna clean things up with a makeup wipe. You're gonna see the magic happen. I like to take my makeup wipe and fold it so I have a nice clean edge. And with the makeup wipe folded so I know I have a nice edge, now I'm gonna line it, relax the eye. Don't go like this and pull because once you let go of it, it could change the shape. Relax the eyes how they will be when you're, you know, you're out and about and people are talking to you and see the shape you want. Take your makeup wipe and clean things up. Then I like to just take my finger and just pat on that edge so it's not too stark and harsh. Now look how beautiful of a clean line that gave us with our shadow. And like I said, now you can see where that black and that purple is almost acting like our wing. Now I am gonna do a little bit of liner just in case someone does want to. So if you have mature skin, I wanna show you a trick where we're not bringing the eyeliner all the way in. Starting at the halfway mark because bringing your eyeliner only on the outside half here will give much more lift to the eye opposed to bringing that darkness all the way down in is just going to drag this down. Another benefit of doing your eyeshadow like this and cleaning it up with a makeup wipe, your eyeshadow is literally giving you the perfect outline for where your wing liner should go. So now I'm gonna take this liner and just do small stroke, to build up our wing. All right, that is the liner on. And we started it right about here. And see when I'm looking straight ahead, how much more lift this is giving to the eye rather than bringing the black all the way in here. This looks so much more open and awake opposed to if we brought the black all the way down in. If you wanna bring it in, of course, but I wanted to show you this trick if you have hooded or mature eyes and don't wanna close off the center. Now I'm just gonna finish up the the other eye, the complexion, and I'll be right back so we can finish up the eye look on the bottom lash line. All right, everything else is done and we are ready to finish up the bottom lash line. So first I'm gonna go in with the transition shade in neutral and we're using a very round stubby brush because we really don't want something that's gonna blow this out all over. We want control when we're doing this. So we're going to take this and run it along the lower lash line and I'm gonna bring this pretty much all the way in because it's just our transition shade so this is gonna anchor a lot of the bottom lash. I feel like this is something that would really change the game for a lot of people, especially mature skin. A lot of Mother of the Brides I end up doing, they're very surprised by this technique because they're so used to putting eyeliner under the eye, and I don't like eyeliner under the eye, especially because I think it crumbles, it creases, it looks very heavy and very stark because it's a cream, so it's going to settle in all of these lines, unlike a powder, especially the way we're blending this out with a fluffy brush now. This is just diffusing all of the products that have settled in these lines underneath, literally blending everything out, and it's it's so much softer and gradient rather than a harsh liner under the eye. So now on that same brush, I'm gonna dip into the Instinct shade, and this we are just gonna run very close to the lash line, but only on the outer half. We're not gonna bring this as far in as we just brought that transition shade just like that. And now same thing, switch to the fluffy brush with nothing on it and just run over that to blend everything together and soften the edges. And last but not least, I'm gonna dip back into the shade Baby on a very detailed small brush. And we are going to use this as our inner corner highlight. So pretty. This is the final makeup look. The new Natasha Denona palette for me, 10 out of 10. This is so awesome for fall. If you don't want a palette this expensive, I highly recommend you check out any of the NYX Ultimate palettes. They are like totally a do for this. The quality is to die for, and they come in so many different iterations and color stories. But overall, I hope you got something from this video and really learned a little bit about blending your eyeshadow, where everything goes, and how to blend it like a dream, like a pro. No matter whether you're doing the simplest of eye looks or a little bit more of a dramatic 
aesthetic look like this for fall. If you guys want to see how I did my complexion, check out this video right here. Keep the party going. As always, guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you are already subscribed, hit the little notification bell and you'll be notified every single time I post. I upload every single day. You don't want to miss it. Wherever you guys are, I hope you are happy, safe, and healthy, and I will see you on the next video. Bye, guys. Bye.